Hello, everybody. My name is Jonathan Tipo, and today I will be talking to you about the Peer-Led Team Learning Ambassador Program, or the PLTL Ambassador Program. Now, my co-director, Alyssa Science, unfortunately could not make it to this conference, so I will be presenting on both of our behalfs, and I would just like to give a nod of acknowledgement to her before I continue. So with that out of the way, let's get started for introductions. So my name is Jonathan Tipo, and you can see I'm in the top corner there, I'm at the top picture, and my co-worker and co-director Alyssa Science is there in the bottom. Now we are both undergraduate students at the University of Texas at El Paso. Uh, side note, the University of Texas at El Paso is a very long name, so I will be most likely referring it to as UTEP. Now we are both general chemistry peer leaders and we are both Northwest Early College alumni. I'll get to on why that piece of information is important later on into the presentation. But before I can tell you about the Peer Leader Ambassador Program or the PLTL Ambassador Program, I would like to tell about our mother program, the Peer Led Team Learning or PLTL Program at UTEP. Now, specifically, this is a general chemistry peer led team learning program. And this was created over 20 years ago and has been maintained for that 20 years by the same person, Dr. James Beckbar. Now, here at the General Chemistry PLTL program, we typically focus on General Chemistry 1305 and 1306. This is the freshman chemistry, which is first semester and second semester. Now, one thing that makes us unique about our own program is that we use have the use of workbooks. And they look something like this, and it's like a textbook. However, I will not be talking about the workbooks during the presentation. And if you are a little bit more curious on that, please go see some of the other presentations that some of the other general chemistry peer leaders have made. Now, out of the roster between 1305 and 1306, we have a little bit more than 50 peer leaders. And for every peer leader, there are give or take around 30 students. So there is no more than 30 students, but there may be less. And it really creates a unique dynamic where you get to really know your students a little bit more than uh, typical instructors or professors will. And that whole instructor and student dynamic dynamic and relationship is strengthened by how little students that we actually take care of. Now, continuing on, this is my favorite part of this entire program is workshop. And to that, we must talk about the six critical components of peer-led team learning, which is number one, the workshop is integral to the course. Now, by requiring students to participate in workshops, all sorts of students would be forced to interact with one another. Now, workshops can comprise of the A students, and the students taking workshop for the third time and everything in between. Now, this creates unique group dynamics of viewing concepts that may be new to all students. Best example of this is when I personally took workshop as a student. Now, I was the student that memorized the SI conversion units. I remember that kilo means one times 10 to the third, mega means one times 10 to the six, and so on. However, that took me 30 minutes. My crewmate, on the other hand, simply walked up and said, hey, man, you're waking way too hard for this. It's just keep my gamer tag and remember 3, 6, 9, 12. And during cookie making, you need pictures. And just remember negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 6, negative 9, negative 12. And that effectively condensed my 30 minutes of hard work and memorization into about 30 seconds. But it's unique dynamics like this would not be possible if workshop was optional. Number two, instructors are involved in the program. Now, this is where this unique idea and the unique dynamic between instructor and peer leader really come into play. Now, because workshop is integral to the course, the instructors who are teaching the course must definitely be in the know of the workshop. Now, a lot of peer leaders like to use workshop as a preview then review method, where this is this, where the students will preview the ideas taught in lecture and then in workshops, they will review it again and then fine tune their understanding to what they do understand and what they don't understand. Now, this professor and peer leader cohesion that is seen throughout what we're doing in the lecture and what we're doing in workshop, that cohesion really allows for a natural sense of direction and a trust between the students and the peer leaders. Now, principle number three. Peer leaders are selected, trained, and supervised to be skilled in group work as facilitators. Now, if you would like to think workshop as a multi-layer cake, each student contributes its own layer and flavor to the cake. However, without the frosting or without the peer leader, the cake would just fall apart. Now, again, the peer leader was not be too overbearing in order to take away from the experience of workshop, but it should 
be used as a facilitation for education. Now, number four, workshop materials are appropriately challenging directly related to the course method of assessment and design for small group works. Now, emphasis on that small group work. Typically in lectures, this big wide open classroom will kind of account for a passive learning style. However, once you start breaking students up into small groups, this switches the learning style from passive into active. And this is the whole idea of PLTL. Number five, this is just how workshops are scheduled. So typically workshops are scheduled are once a week for two hours and contain six to eight students per group in a space suitable for small group activities. Again, of emphasis on that small group activities. Number six, the peer-led team learning program is supported by the department and the institution. Again, without university support, we would not be able to go. And this ties back with topic number one or critical component number one, as workshop is integral with the course, because without the university giving us an actual space and time and CRN for the course, it would just remain optional. But because our university supports us in this way, the PLTL program is allowed to thrive. Now, on the flip side of things, we come from Northwest Early College High School, which is located in El Paso, Texas. It is part of the Canopio Independent School District. And again, as the name suggests, it is an early college high school. So we do work in tandem with the El Paso Community College System. But what is this early college system? Now, some of you may be familiar with it, some of you may not, but let's break it down. We know that the first two years at UTEP is all just basics. This is where you take your general education. This is where you take your English, your social studies, your government, and so on. And we also know that there are four years of high school. So what the early college system does is it merges these two components so that students will actually be taking the basics during their high school. Now, this is done through a series of dual credit or actual community college courses. And ideally, by the end of their graduation, the students should have received their associates and high school, grad, uh, high school degree simultaneously. And to the left is a program that I personally followed is an accelerated program. And really it just means that 20 credit hours average throughout the first three years of high school is taken. And I was able to achieve my associate's degree around 16 years old. So I was very young when it happened. But there are some horror stories as we see that we are very young when we approach these and when we graduate high school and we are immediately dumped into these upper division courses such as mammalian, such as genetics, all these upper division courses. And these are some of the horror stories that we have. And again, I would like to stress that these names have been changed for privacy reason. On the left on the black gown, you see my friend, Terry. Terry was a pretty good student he was a 3.5 AB honor roll, he was part of some extracurricular clubs like Quiz Bowl, uh, the yearbook, robotics. He was part of some of these clubs and he had hopes and dreams of one day becoming an English teacher for high school. Now, Terry took his first set of real university courses and as a full-time student, he dropped out immediately. He failed every single class in his first semester and he did not even think of returning for a second semester. Now on the top there, you see someone in the white gown. This means that he was a top 10%. Now meet Andrew. Andrew is an exceptional student, 4.0 all across the board, all A honor roll, um, part of many extracurricular clubs like NHS, National Honor Society, uh, Girl to Code, uh, the robotics program, the HiQ, Quiz Bowl program, and even the Science Bowl program, and many more. So he was an amazing student and this idea of a Northwest success. And unfortunately, he failed every single first exam when it came to his university courses. Now, why is this? When, why are we going back to specifically early college students? Now, as early college students ourselves, we know some of the struggles and we've kind of condensed all of the struggles into five different problems. There's the passive learning style of high school. There is the time management skills and there is a resource awareness. And these are all just standard high school students or problems that all standard high school students face. Now, number four and five are different. And because we come from an early college high school, it is semi handholding and semi on your own. And this really creates a sense of complacency where you know you're doing good and you're passing all your classes at Northwest Early College. However, you become lax and you become comfortable in your position. And this should not be the case in higher education. Now, this creates a problem when the adjustment period of the general education program is no longer available for these students. 
Uh, we typically hear students saying, oh, my freshman and sophomore years of college, I just blew it off. But these students don't have access to that grace period. They have to be willing to work immediately straight out of high school. Now, this sets a difference of expectations, as you can see on the right. The reality of college is that it's hard. It's way harder than high school. However, the students' confidence are kind of on par with the difficulty. They think they can handle the load, but in reality, they haven't been tested and stressed like that. So how do we fit in? Well, the Peer Leader Ambassador Program creates chemistry help and mentorships, and there are two sides of this coin. Right? So we are part of the chemistry workshops in the Natchez pre-AP chemistry program, and we meet every once every two weeks. We meet for an ambassador takeover, and this is where we will take over their chemistry class, have them talk to us, have them do problems, examples, and model our workshops after, again, the PLTL critical components. Now, the second part of this is the college prep mentorship. And this is where we meet one-on-one -on -one with the students during their college prep time, and we will go over um, once a week, we will go over some sort of study skills or life hack. And this is a 30 minute discussion followed by 30 minutes of study skills where they can ask us any question. Now, some of the discussions that we talk about is FAFSA, email etiquette and college skills. But preliminary, this is again a pilot program and I wanna stress that this is our first month working on it. So we have some preliminary results. However, we are not sure about the overall success of this. So what we are seeing right now is we are seeing increased participation in classes and there are more students comfortable with turning on their cameras with us. And our students and our also our teachers also report that they are more comfortable in all of their classes. There is less chat usage and they actually use more microphone usage. Now this is a 21st century problem, of course, with the whole age of Corona, but there is the more active participation with less chat usage and just more unmuting yourself. And for those of you guys who have experienced this, it is a major step. Now there's more contact for me out of outside designated hours. And that means the students are more comfortable with coming with problems that they have. And finally that students themselves are saying that this is helpful and they prefer this new style of learning. So what does this mean? This means that we are changing the idea on how chemistry is taught and how high school classes are being taught. Now, what I would like to say is we've created a program that we personally would have liked when we were taking classes at the early college. And we really created a program that we have think that will have benefits for these students. So eventually we'll have to see how this all shakes out, but hopefully if everything works out with the support of the University of Texas at El Paso with the support of Northwest Early College and the EPCC, El Paso Community College, we really hope that this program will be successful. Thank you for coming and we'll see you